today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. Van Lathan comes out and confirms that Donald Trump would pardon Diddy. Now, maybe y'all will believe me. I told y'all about Epstein's list getting exposed. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene is confirming that. Now, there's something I like about Kim Kardashian and that Tesla robot photo shoot. I don't know what it is, but I like it. What up? It's Chen Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Thursday morning, my second favorite day of the week. Why? Because Friday is one day away. Uh, all right, you guys, I have a great show set up for you. I have five lead stories. We're going to talk Marjorie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump, Diddy being back in court, and Van Lathan. In quick news, we're going to talk Kodak Black, Kim Kardashian, Netflix, and Amber Rose's beef with Teslin Figaro. As we always do, we're going to close out the show with question of the day and a little bit of sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radio, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Marjorie Taylor Greene says that she will expose abuse claims against Republicans if Matt Gates' report gets released. She put out this tweet and she said, For all my Republican colleagues in the House and the Senate, if we're going to release ethic reports and rip apart our own that Trump has appointed, then I will put all out there for the American people to see. Yes, all the ethic reports and claims, including the ones I filed, all of your harassment and assault claims that were secretly paid off to victims with taxpayers' money, the entire Jeffrey Epstein file tapes recording and witness interviews, But not just those, there's more. Epstein wasn't the only asset. If we're going to dance, let's dance in the sunlight, and I will make sure we all do. (laughs) Yo, Marjorie Taylor Greene is coming for y'all, yo. Um, All right, I'll read you a little bit of the article to give you guys a little bit more context. While reacting to a recent request for the House Ethics Committee to release its finding regarding former Representative Matt Gates, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene believes that everyone's dirty laundry should be made public. On Tuesday morning, the Congresswoman from Georgia took to Twitter to support Donald Trump's selection of Gates for the Attorney General position. In more recent news, Gates has been facing serious allegations for a party in 2027. He reportedly sought to suppress the committee's finding by resigning from Congress the previous week. Green is now advocating for the public release of all the reports from the Health Ethics Committee, along with other documents from House Republicans who may not have been seen, including the entire Jeffrey Epstein file, tapes and recording, and witness interviews. Thought this was really funny. Because, well, not funny, but kind of funny. Um, I told you guys maybe a week ago or two weeks ago that I heard from one of my sources that Donald Trump or somebody on Donald Trump's team was going to release the Epstein and Diddy list. A couple of, I got a couple of emails and a couple of people in the comment section like, oh, this is just clickbait. Oh, you're making this stuff up. And now you see it coming to light that Marjorie Taylor Greene is threatening to release Epstein's list and others. When she says others, she means Diddy. And so basically, I just want to tell you guys I was right. And you could trust my sources when I tell you that I hear something. Um, but we don't know for sure it's going to come out, but a lot of people are pushing back on this, um, Matt Gates appointee for attorney general. Now, whether you agree with this or not, Marjorie, and I never thought I would say this, but Marjorie Taylor Green does have kind of a point that if you're going to release Matt Gates' ethics report, then release everybody's report. Why just him, right? Some would say, some would say that they're only releasing it because he now is being nominated for attorney general. But what about the other appointees who have already been appointed from Um, Joe Biden or been appointed for years that are in some of these positions. Let's hear about their health, their, their reports. I think anybody who's in Congress or a member of Congress, if you have a a health ethics report, of course it should be made public. And I don't think they're actually going to do it. I think this is just a threat, but she has a report. If you're going to expose Matt's, expose everybody's. And I think that once you have a report, it should be put out. 
So uh, you guys let me know what you think now in the comment section below, or you can send me emails at trendoutloud at cfqr600.com. But we might see mats get released. We might see Epstein's. We might see Diddy's. And we might see a lot more from the Republicans in Congress if Marjorie Taylor Greene has her way. <clears throat> Our second lead story, more political drama. Donald Trump names wrestling billionaire Linda McMahon, co-founder of the WWE, as Secretary of Education. Linda McMahon, a longtime ally of Donald Trump and a familiar face in his political orbit, has been named as his pick for Education Secretary. McMahon, who previously served in Trump's first administration, and supported his campaign, has an unconventional background that sets her apart from the traditional cabinet appointees. McMahon, married to Vince McMahon, played a pivotal role in the transforming of the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, the WWE, into a cultural phenomenon and a dominant force in pro wrestling. The company founded by Vince's father became a household name under their leadership, blending athleticism and entertainment in a way that captivated audiences worldwide. Her connection to Donald Trump predates politics, going back to his guest appearances at WWE events. One of the most notable moments came during WrestleMania 23 in 2007, where Trump participated in a storyline feud with Vince McMahon. The drama and back and forth with Trump and Vince McMahon came to a head when Trump shaved Vince McMahon's head at the center of a ring, a spectacle that drew worldwide global attention. So um, I think most of you may have heard this by now. This actually came out yesterday. We didn't put it in the show yesterday, but it was literally everywhere, all over my feed, all over Twitter, all over the internet. And I needed to put this in here today to ask you guys, why is this such a big deal? We just told you in our first lead story about Matt Gates that has all of these accusations against him and that, and now we're, you guys are making a big deal of Linda McMahon, like, because she's part of the WWE. I'm not saying that she's a great pick for a secretary of education, but there's so many other appointees that he, that Trump has made that I don't see why this is that much of a big deal, why this is equally as a big headline as, um, Matt Gates. I find it hilarious. Like, there's so many other things that we could be talking about. Let me know what you guys think about this and and just to be clear i understand the fact that she doesn't have any sort of background in education and she was the ceo of the wwe so there is no correlation but most of trump's picks don't have a lot of correlation when it comes to what they're appointed on so why is this such a big deal i don't know but comment below send me an email i'd love to know what you guys think about this WWE is still a billion dollar company. It's still something that she ran. Um, so it's not like she's just, you know, sitting down at home doing nothing. But hey, may maybe I'm wrong. I'll, I'll let you guys um, comment and let me know. Our third lead story, Judge Rules 4 Diddy says that the feds went too far in their raid and the feds must destroy copies made of his personal notes. All right, this is a little bit of a follow-up for yesterday's breaking news. Sometimes when you break news, you don't have everything all together. So this has all come together now. Um, so I just want to tell you some details that we forgot to tell you yesterday. Um, a judge has sided with Diddy's defense following the federal raid of his jail cell, ruling that the prosecutors must destroy copies of 19 pages of legal notes obtained unlawfully. During the hearing at the MDC Brooklyn, Diddy's attorney argued that the raid violated his rights involving privileged attorney-client material concerning his racketeering trial. The prosecution, while defending their raid as justified due to concerns about Diddy's influencing witness, was ordered not to consult the seized material until a final decision is made. Okay, I'm just going to read you a couple more things and then I'll, I'll give you guys some context. Um, this was actually just put out by Megan, um, our correspondent. She says, the judge has some questions for D Sean Diddy Combs's lawyer about their claim that the notebook seized from his jail cell was labeled legal. He wants them to address why the label didn't appear in the photographs from the court possession. The judge has some questions for Sean Diddy Combs's lawyers about their claims that the notebook seized from his jail cell was labeled legal. 
He wants them to address why the label doesn't appear on the photographs in the court's possessions and why they didn't mention it in their filing. This comes as the judge is considering whether the notes are protected by attorney-client privilege. After yesterday's hearing, the judge said that the government must immediately delete the photographs and noted that the issue is pending the court ruling on whether this will be considered client privilege. Um, uh, I have one more video and then we'll talk about it. Well, not one more. I have one video and then we'll talk about it. Take a listen. Did his defense team slam prosecutors for what they say was a violation of attorney client privilege and a violation of Diddy's Fourth Amendment constitutional right against unreasonable searches and seizures? The judge ordered the prosecutors to hand back any notes that they had and also to destroy any copies of those notes as well. All right. So just to pull everything together, like I said, this was something that we didn't get to report yesterday because not all the new have come in is that the 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 uh the pictures that the officers took of diddy's notes that they found in his jail cell the judge ruled them to delete them destroy them they cannot have them in their possession that is a huge win for diddy now what else that was in that report is saying that um, we haven't, we won't decide yet if those are under client privilege or not. We'll, we'll, we'll decide that at another time. It's actually, I think, I think December the 15th, I think they're going to decide if that will be admissible. But until then, the prosecution is not allowed to keep it. And Diddy's team has to explain to them why the, the word legal on top of the notepad wasn't there in the pictures because Diddy and his lawyers are saying, hey, it was written legal on top of it, but they were saying it's not in the photograph. So what that tells me is that Diddy, Diddy's lawyers probably told him after the raid to write legal on the notepad, say that it was client privilege. Um, but now they're stuck between a rock and a hard place because on the original pictures, when the officer was there taking the pictures, legal wasn't there. So they're going to have to fight that in court. Like I said, it will be separate. And then they'll determine if it will be admissible. If it wasn't written legal on top of it, they're going to have a hard and hard time. If it was written legal, it will be easy because the officer should have known, hey, this is legal. That means it's client privilege. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So, the, but the win, the win Regardless what, what happens December the 15th, the win is that it will not be admissible in Diddy's Friday's bail hearing. They have a hard, I would say hard, but they have a steeper mountain to climb now, the prosecution, to keep Diddy in jail. This, I think, probably will be his final bail hearing. And another thing that they're going to uh, put in there is that the uh, Mike Jeffries, the CEO from Albuquerque and Finch, um, was actually in New York under similar charges, not as severe, but similar charges. And he was let out on $10 million bail. Diddy is offering $50 million. The Diddy's legal team is going to show on Friday why those cases are similar and that should be used as precedent. You've heard me say this a couple of times. Anything that happens in court, you could use that as precedent. Hey, this hearing is similar to ours. This judge ruled on that. It, that means it's precedent. So the other judge will have to, not have to, but will normally go and, uh, and and go with what is precedent. So we will see what happens. There's people on both sides that think this doesn't matter about these pictures, the, the client privilege, and, and, and Alba Carmby and Finch, Diddy is not getting out because he has more severe charges than Je Jeffries. I think it's 50-50. And like I said, what my sources have told me that Diddy has been calling in some favors and stick around because I have... Uh, on my fifth lead story, something from Van Lathan and Donald Trump and something that I told you guys like last week. So whew, with all of that said, make sure y'all tune in um, Friday for a special episode. We will be conducting a special episode and let you guys know what is happening with Diddy and this final attempt at bail. If he does not get out, he will stay in jail till May the 5th when his trial starts. So that is up. Uh, that is bringing you all up to date now with your Diddy court bail uh, news. Our fourth lead story, property manager recalls the aftermath of a birthday party Diddy threw for Meek Mills, saying that he allegedly found a lot of crazy stuff after the party, all right? Um, I'm going to read this article to you. Excuse me for the things that I cannot say because I don't want to get flagged on YouTube, but I will do my best, all right? 
Uh, details from the behind the scenes of Diddy's famous party continue to spill out amongst his legal problems. In this case, a property manager from a past mansion party thrown by Diddy is telling all. Jason, the property manager, told the Daily Mail that the aftermath from the party was disgusting. He says that Meek Mill's 27th birthday party ended up with um, sheets that had a lot of, let's just call them fluids, bodily fluids, um, ones that are red, all right, um, underwear, and a lot of other um, paraphernalia. He says there was bo uh, broken bottles of alcohol. There was um, a lot of protection things, lube, um, powder. <laughs> um, Jesus, a lot of things that I can't read here. He says it was just a disaster, okay? He found um, panties, bras, and even two, uh, two iPhones that were behind the bowling alley. He said the party took place May the 3rd, 2014, and featured masked dancers and women that were covered in sushi. Diddy rented the property for close to $25,000 for 24 hours. Several celebrities like French Montana and Little Dirk were in attendance. According to Jason, the property manager, the party was running rampant with a lot of paraphernalia. He remembers being contacted by Diddy's personal assistant in April 2014 ahead of the event. He says they inquired about the rental, but also had several requests, which included double-sided door locks. Listen to this. Jason says they requested that all inner bedroom door locks were to be ordered new and left unopened for their arrival for security purposes as they would need to supervise the installation. And both keys were to be given to Mr. Combs directly and nobody else. Separate door locks, brand new door locks needed to be ordered. Nobody could touch them. Nobody could open them. He would have his security team watch the installation and then the keys would be handed to Diddy. That is crazy. Um, just wanted to read you guys. I'm sure it's not that shocking anymore because of all the things that we have heard about Diddy. But the thing that shocks me and the thing that I've never heard about is the locks on the door that you renting a mansion party and the, all the bedroom door locks need to be all brand new and installed with Diddy's bodyguard supervising. And then all the keys had to be given to Diddy. Y'all know something went down in those rooms. That's just not an ordinary party, man. That is fully crazy. Diddy's on another level. Video footage from a birthday bash Sean Diddy Combs threw for his friend Meek Mill in April of 2014 has surfaced in the midst of the disgraced rapper's trafficking arrest. Diddy's personal assistant relayed specific requests for the party, including bringing their own smoke detectors and that all interior bedroom door locks were to be ordered new and left unopened for their arrival. Our fifth lead story, Van Lathan confirms that Donald Trump might pardon Sean Diddy Combs. All right, this is another I told you so moment. Uh, I wanted to play this for you. For those of you who don't know who Van Lathan is, Van Lathan used to head the newsroom at TMZ, and he is a uh, respected journalist. So when I told you guys last week that I heard from my sources that Donald Trump might be pardoning Diddy and Diddy reached out, a lot of you believe me, but some of you in the comment section were like, yeah, this is clickbait. I don't believe it. Maybe now that Van Lathan is saying it a week later, that um, a week later after I said it, thank you very much, uh, maybe y'all will believe it a little bit more now. Take a listen to Van Lathan, and then uh, I have a little bit of a part two where I'm going to tell you about a new Diddy case, but I want to throw this in here right now. Take a listen to my boy, Van Lathan. This is a fair case. Don't be surprised if Trump, in some kind of way, gets involved with the Diddy situation. Don't be surprised if the new administration making this easy for Diddy or pardoning Diddy after the fact, commuting the sentence. I don't think it was it the worst thing so. for Diddy at all that Trump got elected. They've also known each other personally for a very long time. That Go back to my episode last week, and he literally said verbatim everything that I said. They've been friends for a long time. This is a good thing for Diddy that Trump got nominated. He could pardon him. He could, uh, you know, help him get... It's, it's everything that your boy said, man. That's why y'all need to just tune into the Drunk Love podcast. You don't need to listen to anything else. Um, all right, so let me just go on quickly to tell you two new lawsuits. I mean, every day there's a new freaking lawsuit that uh, pops up with Diddy, but I just wanted to tell you guys about this. Uh, Diddy faces two new lawsuits from a woman who claims he forced her to 
do some things to a group of friends and a man who claimed he woke up one day feeling painful in, you know, that area. And uh, he is blaming and suing Diddy. Diddy is facing two new lawsuits for alleged assault, one involving a woman and the other alleging a man. Diddy has denied all the accusations. According to TMZ, in the first case, a Maryland woman says she was 18 years old in 2001 when Diddy assaulted her outside of a Halloween party in NYC. She claims his security team took her to a limo where Diddy and six other people were waiting. After she was handed a drink, she says that she was to do some performances on him and uh, his crew. The second case is a Florida man that says he was at a Miami after party when he believes that um, somebody may have um, like slipped him something. He alleges that he woke up feeling painful in that area. And uh, he said when he turned around, Diddy was there and he um, was standing tall. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, or something was standing tall, and he was trying to um, do something to him also back there. He said he got up and um, put his clothes on, and he ran out of the place, and that's why he is suing Diddy. So there are two more cases against Diddy. That should add up to, I don't know, maybe like 200 at this point, but I just wanted to uh, tell you all the men. Did he, even if he gets out of this Fed case, he's going to be in court literally for the next 10 years. I don't know where he's going to find the money to fight all these cases, but we'll see what happens. Maybe Trump will help him with these two. All right, this brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. New Instagram feature lets you reset your algorithm. All right, let me know if you guys are excited about this. I think this is super cool. I would never dare do it. I love my Instagram. As you guys know, I'm literally on Instagram 10 hours a day, but it's my job and I do love it. Uh, but for those of you who are maybe tired of your Instagram, tired of the things that you are used to seeing, the algorithm can be reset and restored and you could start all over again. Uh, the article, or actually not the article, but Instagram posted this and said, do you want a fresh start? We suggest post reels and other content based on factors that you like and follow your activity, but now those can be reset. You'll see the suggestions about topics that you may be different and that you want to see. Reset can't be undone, but your suggestions will become more personalized again as you like, share, and interact. Resetting won't change who you follow or your ad topics. You can choose to update those before you reset. This won't delete your data. We'll still use it to personalize your experience in other ways and for the purpose explained in our policy agreement. So yeah, for those of you who don't know, but you should know, but for those of you who don't know, uh, your, your Instagram or anything you use that's in social media, it feeds you what it thinks you like based on what you stop and read, what you like, what you share. What you share is the most important. Anything that you actually interact with and stop, and let's say it's, I don't know, an article about cats. Oh my gosh, the algorithm is going to be like, oh my gosh, we got him or her and they sent this cat picture, you're going to get a bunch of cats. So some of you who may have kids and your kids might be liking and sharing things and now you see things that you don't want, this is a really cool feature that you could just reset. Or, you know, if you're into something or, you know, you're in a relationship now or guys out there who was looking at, you know, girls and all that stuff. And now your girl is like, my gosh, I don't like how your, your Instagram feed is. You could just reset it. You could start looking at relationship posts now and make your girl happy or vice versa. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And let me know if you guys would want to reset your uh, algorithm. Like for me, I want to keep it the same. I never want to change it. I've worked hard at personalizing my Instagram, but let me know in the comment section below or send me an email, trend out loud at cfqr600.com. Our second quick story Kodak Black admits he's never sober while addressing a fan on live. He said, sober for what? It seems that Kodak Black has faced yet another setback in his sobriety journey, with the rapper revealing he is constantly under the influence. During an Instagram live session, Kodak Black spoke candidly on his current use as a fan expressed worry about him in recent weeks. He addressed one commenter that said, we love when Kodak Black is sober. He replied and said, I ain't sober. I look sober. I've never been sober. B word for what? Look at all this money. Look at all this cash. Sober for what? 
I'm too young to be sober. Every time I talk about Kodak Black, I say the same thing. I blame the people in his camp. I blame the people around him. When you're under the influence and you're like the guy says he's never sober, he cannot make decisions for himself. It becomes like a mental impairment. He needs help. I always say this. I don't think this is funny. I don't think it's something that we should laugh at. Um, I put it in here so maybe somebody in his camp or in his team will wake up and hear this. But Kodak Black is, is a great artist. He's a great guy. I, I, I'm, I'm a big Kodak fan. But um, you know, somebody in his camp needs to do something, make an intervention, force him to go and get cleaned up and stay in, um, in, in a facility. But they won't because the more that he stays out, the more he does concerts, the more money he gets and the more people that are around him get to eat. And they're going to make their money. While he just keeps on, you know, getting under the influence and ruining his life. And it's just totally sad to me. I just, I hate seeing it. But hopefully, like I said, somebody hears this and reaches out and, and does something to help our brother, Kodak Black. Our third quick story. Kim Kardashian shares new photos snuggled up with her Tesla robot. Okay, I love this. For those of you who can't see this, I'll try my best to describe it for you, but I'm going to put the pictures up on YouTube and Spotify. I love futuristic things, but uh, I don't know. I just like the setting of the pictures. I like her outfit. I like the Tesla robot. Um, the robot is sitting in um, Tesla's new, their, their, I think it's their self, uh, self-driving self taxi cars that are going to be available, I think, in 2026 for around $30,000. They're the new cars that you could buy for yourself, but when you're not using them, you could send them out on their own and they'll be like Ubers and people could take them and you could make money with your car while you're not using it. I personally wouldn't do that, but I understand the people who would want to. You could end up almost maybe having a free car. Um, the Tesla robot doesn't car come with the car. But this is just Tesla using Kim Kardashian for um, you know marketing. I love it. She's there, like the uh, the robot is in the driver's seat, and she's like holding his hand, and she's posing up with the robot like that's her man in the pictures. It's really, 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 really dope. I really like this whole photo shoot. She's sitting on his lap. His hand is on her. There's there's one picture where they're holding hands. Anyways, really dope. If you're not seeing this, check it out. Go to my YouTube, uh, Trend Out Loud, and check it out. But shout out to Kim. Shout out to Tesla. Great marketing. I'm not a big Tesla guy. I'm not a big EV guy. But this is a great photo shoot and a great campaign. Shout out to Kim and Tesla. Our fourth quick story. Netflix hit with a class action lawsuit over streaming issues during the Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight. Netflix is facing a class action lawsuit after users experienced major streaming issues during the Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight. Ronald Blue filed a lawsuit in Florida on November the 20th, just days after he and others struggled to watch the fight broadcasted on Netflix. According to reports, court documents showed that as soon as he and others tuned in around 8 p.m. on Friday, November the 15th, he was met with um, issues, streaming glitches, and buffering issues. Uh, Ronald is suing Netflix for breach of contract and seeking unspecific damage, sorry, unspecified damages. Netflix acknowledged the issues on Saturday, stating, We do not want to dismiss the poor experience some members had, but still we are calling this event a huge success. I could have smelt this coming from a mile away. The minute this hit, I was like, Oh gosh, people are going to start getting together. I didn't know it would be a class action lawsuit, but yes. Um, Whenever you have any sort of like issue like this, that is going to be very hard to determine who had the issues or not. Of course, you're going to get a class action and Netflix is going to have to pay out money or they're going to have to give out maybe like free monthly services or what have you. We shall see uh, what happens with that. But regardless of what happens, this is a huge win. I told you guys yesterday that the numbers were updated when it first came out on Monday. It was 60 million people tuned in for the fight. Then yesterday, that was bumped up to 108. Huge win for Netflix. Even if they have to pay out a couple of million dollars to people, it's going to be totally fine. Big win for Netflix. Our fifth quick story. Teslin Figaro checks Amber Rose after the Trump-supporting model 
tries to slam her for her Kamala Harris comments. All right, um, I'm going to play a little clip because Tesla Figaro was on The Breakfast Club. I'm going to play a little clip. I'm going to read to you what they said back and forth to each other, and then I'm going to turn it over to you because I really want to know what you guys think of this. Here's a clip. Take a listen. America was not going to vote for a woman of color, period. All right, Tesla Figaro says that America is not ready to vote for a black woman, and Amber Rose thinks that's not true. Amber Rose said this under the post. WTF is she talking about most white people in America voted for Barack Obama both terms. Stop with the um, white people talking points and oppression. Kamala was in over her head. I'm sure she's relieved that she lost. Now it's time for a real alpha to MAGA. Um, all right. So Tesla Figaro came and answered and she said, Obama was a man, ma'am, and WTF you talking about? Ma'am, I actually gave you a little credit for your effort when I said I understood why Trump thought you would add some level of value. So you may want to watch the entire interview before coming for me. I'm not like others that like to play on the internet, and this ain't College Hill. I school people like you with ease. So relax and follow your fellow Trumper's advice and stop being emotional. And before you respond back, I invite you to go live with me to discuss any time. All right, I know Tesla super well and trust me Tez is not somebody that you want to play with so Amber I actually dare you to attempt to go and argue with Tesla live on IG she will literally tell you apart but more importantly I wanted to know what you guys thought about this because now of course this is what everyone's talking about on all the blogs do you think that um, people didn't vote for Kamala Harris solely because that she was a black woman and America is not ready for a black woman. In the interview, Tez says the Democrats made a mistake already just not even choosing a white male. She's like, you have to choose a white male. The, America is not ready for anything else. They're not going to give that position of presidency, especially to um, a, a black woman before they give it to a white woman and they wouldn't give it to Hillary. So they're not going to give it to, to Kamala. She says that the Democrats were stood no chance. Everything else they did after that was just a waste of time. Again, her point of view. And again, like I always say, we are not a red podcast. We're not a blue podcast. We are independent. We are purple, but we do love to have discussions. We know we have a lot of Democrats that watch and a lot of Republicans and of course, independents. So uh, we like to just have this conversation. So sound off below. The question is, is do you think that America is ready for a black woman to be president? Comment below, send me your emails, trend out loud at cfqr600.com. All right. This brings us to question of the day. What's a perfect name for twins? All right. Somebody said today and tomorrow, uh, IG not said Denise and the nephew. That's actually hilarious. Denise and the nephew. That's, that's maybe going to be one of my favorites. Uh, Larry pro underscore said for first and foremost, uh, Mega82 said hell and nah. That's hilarious. Somebody else said summer and autumn. Heaven and Neva. Okay, I don't, I don't get that. Rain and storm. Dawn and Julio. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Desiree82 wrote that. Dawn Julio. Somebody else said well and fair. Wow. Twins, twins and them. Um, Okay, I don't even know what that is. Phil and Lil. Phil, okay, I guess Phil and Lil, I get it. Uh, legend and Legacy. Legend and Legacy. That doesn't even sound good. Somebody said yin and yang. That's hilarious. Uh, thing one and thing two. Harmony and Symphony. That's kind of cool. Harmony and Symphony. Somebody said Smith and Wesson. That's hilarious. Dallas and Houston. Um, here we go. What else? This is Diamond and Pearl, Scarlet and Violet, Tyler and Taylor. That would just be confusing. Chance and Choice, uh, Kylie and Riley, Snow and Summer, Coco and Chanel, Paris and London. At one point, I wanted to name my daughter Paris, but yeah, I'm not down with that. Um, all right. Those are pretty good. Somebody said Brooklyn and Bronx. Get your answers to me. Send me emails, comment below. Uh, what do you think of those twin names? Or send me some better ones that you think 
um, that were better of the ones that I just read to you. All right, this brings us to sports news. Okay, I got to run through this quickly. I have two topics, um, but we're running low on time. Sport analyst Ryan Clark questions why NBA rookie Bronny James is getting special treatment from the Lakers. Former NFL player Ryan Clark recently shared his disappointment through Bronny James' special treatment with the Los Angeles Lakers. Basically, his disappointment is because Bronny is not, um, doesn't have to go on the away games. Let's play a little clip quickly and take a listen. What has Bronny James done that he shouldn't be able to stay at the courtyard Marriott? You say, well, they fly commercial. What has Bronny James done where he should be too good to fly commercial? You guys know how fed up I am of talking about Bronny James. I think this is so stupid to keep talking about. But Ryan brings up a really good point. If you're going to be in the G League and you're going to be on the team... You're telling me you can't fly coach and stay in a, a Hotel 6? Like, come on. I understand your dad's a billionaire and you're rich, but it, it, it should be about the basketball. Like, what is it about literally just being stuck beside your dad all the time? Like, this is a horrible look for Bronny and LeBron. I wasn't a fan of this whole thing to begin with. I think Bronny shouldn't even be on the Lakers team. But if you are going to put him there and he's going to go to the G League, he should be treated like everybody else. All right? Um, and then second thing is... Deion Sanders, I told you guys yesterday that Deion, there's like rumors that are going around that Deion Sanders and his son Shador Sanders might be going to the Dallas Cowboys. And I found something that says that, um, that Deion Sanders would 100% accept the Cowboys job if they drafted Shador Sanders. So it is entirely fact that it might happen. We don't know. But as I was prepping for the show today, I actually saw that um, Dallas Cowboys are actually looking at um, um, my, uh, Bill Belichick, former coach of the New England, New England Patriots, that he might go to uh, um, Cowboys next year. We don't know. It's all up in the air. Of course, you know, I'm a big prime fan, so I would love to see Dion and Shador go over there. So we'll see. I'll keep you guys up to date. All right. Uh, thank you so much for kicking with me on my Thursday show. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Friday show and then our special edition Friday afternoon uh, for Diddy's bail hearing. I'm super excited to see what happens with that case. All right, uh, before I let you guys go, just want to remind you of all the ways to keep up with the Trying Out Loud podcast. If you're used to watching the show on YouTube or listening to it on podcast platforms, please try to check me out Monday through Friday uh, from 11 to 12 on CFQR600.com or 600 AM if you're in the Montreal area. We do play the Trying Out Loud podcast, but we do mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B. It's a great hour. It's a great way for you to get your entertainment and viral news while listening to your favorite hits from the 90s and 2000s. Vice versa, if you're used to listening to this show on CFQR 600 and you can't always catch the show between 11 to 12, we get it. You're busy. You got things to do. Don't worry. We got you. I'm going to tell you three ways to keep up to date with the show. Um, on CFQR 600's new website, uh, you can click when you click listen live, there will be a listen on demand that pops up. You click right there and you'll see the trend out loud podcast. You could listen to all 380 podcasts. There's obviously also YouTube that's available to you and any Spotify, sorry, and any podcast platform, just go to your desired site, type in trend out loud. The show will pop up. Don't forget to hit the follow and subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we upload a new show. And of course we upload daily because we're working hard for y'all, man. Uh, you can follow me on any social platform. It's always the same at It's Trend Out Loud. Don't forget to follow the media company, at Two City Media, on Instagram. And lastly, everybody who is tuned in right now on CFQR 600, do not touch your dial. My homeboy, Don Smooth, is coming up next with the lunch mix from 12 to 1. And Don is always dropping the hits. I'll see you all tomorrow. It's almost Friday, y'all. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Trend Out Loud. Peace.